right. Uh, good afternoon or morning or whenever you're watching this. All my game design students. Let me make sure I'm kind of in the camera there. Um, I am making a quick video to get you started on making a sort of top-down shooter style game. Okay. Um, and so it's going to be pretty straightforward. I am here in Construct 3. So this is where you need to start, obviously. Um, and there are some assets okay, that you can use or you can create your own. For this one, I just have a little sprite sheet that I got off of... Uh, a royalty free website and I actually have it here on Google Classroom where you can download it if you're in my class um, but if not you can find something that pretty much all works the same and I'll sort of uh, teach you the principles of kind of getting those set up no matter what your assets are so we're actually gonna click new here and we're just gonna call it top down right makes it easier um, standard definition landscape 1920 by 1080 perfect great we're gonna create this okay if we zoom out here, awesome. We have our uh, our sheet here, okay? The first thing we need to do is just add a tiled background. So I'm gonna double click to add an object. We're gonna go to tiled background, okay? And then I can do this here. And what I'm gonna do is just make it really simple. I'm just gonna go ahead and make it silver. And then I'm gonna take the paintbrush here and just add some white specks around here. So when you're testing a game and you don't necessarily have any background assets, this is a really good way to just create an easy background that will show you movement. Okay? If you make the background just a solid color, it's actually hard to see your sprite move around the screen. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to right click this. I'm going to align this to cover the layout and then I'm going to lock it in place. Okay? Pretty straightforward. I'm going to go ahead and rename the layer to background. Okay, we always want to make sure to give our layers and sprites descriptive names. Okay. As for this tiled background, I don't really need to change it unless I'm going to have multiple things in my background here. That's pretty descriptive as it goes already. So I'm actually going to lock this layer up. I'm going to add a layer at the top. I'm going to call it the player layer. So this is where our player, character, and uh, the rest of our sprites are actually going to be. They're going to be in front of the background. Okay. The first thing we need to do is double click and we are going to add in a sprite. So I'm actually gonna search for sprite. It's gonna pop it up right here. And where's my mouse? Oh, there it is. That's weird, it's not showing up in front of the thing. But I'm gonna try and position my mouse really anywhere on the screen here and just click there. Um, and I'm going to open up a file. And I have mine here set as top down assets. Now here's the issue. All of these assets are on one sprite sheet here. So I'm gonna show you how to actually isolate what you want and make it work. So I'm actually gonna use this bald guy right here with just his hand sticking out. And I need to use this select tool right here. And you can see I can kind of position it. And it's just one pixel big, my cursor. I'm gonna position it here. And I'm gonna click and drag to select all the pixels in my little guy here. And now that I have this selected, I'm gonna hit crop, which is on your top bar, right in the middle. Boom, see you later. That whole thing's gone, okay? So now I just have this top-down aspect of like a, a bald guy with his hand sticking out. Okay. Um, some things I need to do. I need to resize this because it's actually pretty small. So I'm going to click resize. I want to make sure to keep the aspect ratio or it'll stretch my image out really weird. And then I can just change the width to something like 250 pixels. Okay. So now you'll see it's much bigger. I've made it about 10 times, more than 10 times as big. Okay. Um, but it just helps it show up on our screen a little bit. Uh, the next thing I need to do is make sure to check out its origin points. So it has its origin point. I'm going to right click. I'm going to quick assign it to the middle. And you'll see it shows up right there in the middle of my guy. Okay. Now, I need to click uh, create another origin point, or an image point in this case. I'm going to add a new image point, image point one. You can just leave it like that. And I'm going to put it right here on the end of his hand. Okay. And you're going to see why here in a little bit as we add some behaviors to this. But what I can do now is I can exit out of this. You'll see there's my guy, pretty big, um, which for this activity is exactly what we want. And I just want to rename this to player sprite. Okay. This right here is our player sprite. Now, this player sprite needs a few behaviors. Okay. Let's add these. First behavior I want, solid. Okay. Second behavior is bound to layout. So my player character can't ever leave the layout. If he hits the walls, um, he just won't be able to exit. Okay, So it just creates kind of boundaries for our player character. 
Uh, the next thing I want is scroll to. So I want the screen to scroll to where my player character is. And lastly, I want to add some movement. And this movement is going to be eight direction. Okay. So now if I start this up, you can see I can move my player around the map here. Okay. Now you might think, wow, your player character is moving crazy slow, which is actually the case. Okay, and that's because I just made my player character so big. So if I will go over here to my eight direction movement, you'll see my max speed is just 200 pixels, basically. That is crazy slow. So I'm actually gonna change my max speed to 1,000. Now if I come back into my game, okay, you can see our player character moves, but they start accelerating really slow, and then they slide super far. Let me hold my keyboard up so you can actually see this. Okay, I'm gonna press down. By the time I let go, it slides for like two or three more seconds, okay? Not ideal. But to do this, we just need to select our player character and just change the acceleration and deceleration. I'm just gonna change them to like 10,000, okay? And you'll see the effect this has is it makes our movement super snappy. Stops and sta starts and stops exactly when I want, okay? Now, you might say, huh, I don't like that. I want it to be a little more fluid of motion. That's okay. You can just mess with those values that you have there, okay? Um, so now we've created this character sprite. Um, we've allowed them to move around all over the board, um, or the board, sorry, our, our layout here. Um, we're going to add a couple more things here. So we need to add a couple more objects. The first one is going to be the mouse, because we actually need to utilize the mouse. And the keyboard, okay? So we've added mouse and keyboard as kind of our control systems for this game. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna double click and we're going to add another sprite. And I'm gonna actually make sure to add this sprite outside of the layout, so up here. And I'm gonna load up that same uh, file here, the top down assets, and I'm gonna zoom in <clears throat> to this right here, this little fire looking thing. And I'm going to do the same thing I did before where I select and I select all of that sprite, click crop to crop it down. I gotta zoom back out and find it here, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna rotate it so it's facing the other way. You want everything facing to the right. For some reason in Construct, that's just what the default direction is. So if you want it to be oriented the right way, you just gotta face it to the right. Um, once it's there, I wanna go ahead and resize it, keep the aspect ratio. Um, and I'm probably just gonna change it to 50 pixels. I think that should work. If I exit out, I can actually see how big it is. And that's actually probably a little bit small. So I can open it back up. I can resize it. And let's just double the size. Let's just go to 100 pixels. Now if I exit back out, yeah, it looks pretty good. Now you'll notice here on mine, the origin point is way up here. As I click and drag this around, oh, not what I wanted to do. That origin point is all the way up here. So we actually need to make sure to change that. So we'll go to image points, origin. I want to quick assign it to the middle. That's a great place to have it. Now if I exit out, okay, now it's all in the right place. This is exactly where we want this. Now what I'm going to call this is fire sprite. Okay, I need to add a couple behaviors to this. Number one, okay, destroy outside layout. Perfect. Number two, I need to add some movement. And in this case, it's going to be bullet movement. <clears throat> now, what bullet movement does is it just causes the object to start moving on a straight line. Okay? So that's all this will do. Now, you'll notice I don't start this sprite inside the layout. I have it outside the layout, which means when I start this game up, immediately that sprite is destroyed. It's gone. Okay? But we're going to add some events to help spawn that sprite where we want it to spawn. So we're going to go over to our event sheet, and we're going to add an event, and we're going to go to mouse, and we're going to say on click, okay, left button, click, perfect. We're going to add an action, and we're going to go to our player sprite, and we're going to search for spawn. And what we're going to do is spawn another object from our player sprite. It's going to ask us which object we want to choose, and in this case, we want to choose the fire sprite. And we want to actually make it spawn on layer one 
and image point one. So it's gonna spawn on our player layer at the image point that we created in that first, uh, when we created our player sprite, all right? So now if we start this up and I click, ah, oh, look at that. Whoa, everywhere I go, you see, and when I click, I spawn this sprite. And I can go all the way to the edge of the layout and every time it exits the layout, it's destroyed, okay? Now, some issues with this, as you'll see, my character is faster than the image sprites. So some changes we need to make, go back to your layout, click on your image sprite, go down to your behaviors and you can change the speed, the acceleration, the gravity, you can make it bounce off solids. Um, we're just gonna change the speed to like 5,000. If you remember, I changed my player speed to 1,000, so my bullet will go five times faster. There it is, look at that. I'm high. Awesome. Now you might think that's too fast and not like it, and that's okay, you can change it to whatever speed you like, okay? The last thing we're gonna do here, okay, is we are actually going to use our mouse to aim, okay, to aim our character. So I'm gonna add an event, and I'm gonna go to system, and I'm gonna go to every tick. And what this does is it's every time the screen refreshes, which by default is about 60 times per second, it's going to do whatever action we want. The action we want is we're gonna add action, we're gonna take our player sprite, and we're going to set angle. And we're gonna set an angle toward a position, okay, towards a specific position. Now, what we want to set it to is our mouse, wherever our mouse is. So it asks for an X and Y coordinate, and what we're going to say is mouse.x and y mouse.y. So what this does is every, or 60 times per second, it's going to check where our mouse is, and it's going to line our character up to wherever the mouse is. Okay. And you'll see as I move my mouse around, my player character is aligned to the mouse. Now, slight issue. Look at where my mouse is. When I click, look where it fires my fire to. Not where the mouse is. So one last change we're gonna make here is we're going to add an action onto the on left button clicked, okay? We're gonna add an action. We wanna take our fire sprite and we wanna set angle but toward a position. And again, it's gonna be mouse.x, whoop and mouse dot y. And now you'll notice when I start this up, my character will follow my mouse and when I click, it'll actually go to where my mouse is instead of just going straight forward. And that just gives you a little more accuracy, right? If you were to actually play this game and move around, okay, you want the, the bullet movement, the fire sprite in this case, to move to where you're actually firing, okay? Now you have this basic top-down shooter with movement, shooting this little fire sprite, okay, and following where your mouse is, using your keyboard and mouse as controls. Okay? Um, I hope this has been helpful for you. It's a pretty simple layout, pretty simple event sheet, um, but it's a great starter for learning how to use basic behaviors in Construct 3. If you have any questions, let me know. Send me an email, comment on Google Classroom, and I will see you guys later. Bye.